Okay, we're back. If you don't like the color of this stem, I frankly like it better than this one, but if you don't, then all you'd have to do is to take a little phthalo blue, which is a much brighter blue, and mix that with your yellow, and you get a much more vibrant green. So if you wanted to do that, you could add that. If you wanted a more vibrant color. So really you have a lot of options when it comes to uh, what you want to do with your paintings. And because botanicals are uh, very forgiving, you can actually really choose what you, um, how you want it to be. It doesn't have to be exactly like what you're seeing. And again, I would soften that right away by charging the purples right into it. Keeping it soft is the key. You just want, you want that softness. And anywhere that you want a darker value, you can mix your greens and your violets. Hmm, that's quite nice. I think this is uh, too artificial, that color right there, so I really wouldn't do that. I would just make it darker with a more natural looking um, color here. Pretty color though. It's just a bluer version of that. And just softening everything as you go. Remembering your values and remembering what comes forward and what stays back. And of course, softening it all as you go. And the reason I um, chose this particular uh, subject is um, we are going to paint this in oil as well as watercolor. So let's make up some more violet, get our pyro red and our ultramarine blue and get it to that warm red, I mean that warm violet that we're looking for. We're just point, oh that's nice, look at that. All right. Now we're gonna drop in these darks. Just with the edge of the brush. Remembering to soften anywhere there's a dark. And softening it immediately with water so we don't have a hard edge. And this is how I develop a painting. Um, I am a very patient painter, so I, I don't mind how long it takes to develop these actual um, paintings. If you're not a patient painter, you know, you might enjoy painting wet on wet all at one time. rather than letting your, letting it dry. See if I just put that in there and let it sit there, it's gonna make that nice dark right at the, right where I want it. So I want these to drop, I wanna drop these in right where I want them and let them stay there.
everywhere I see a dark edge. So what I'm basically doing is I'm pushing one petal or one um, petal behind the other. And developing form. And of course softening with a damp brush so we don't get any harsh lines. Just go back over it and soften it. Now you see we're starting to, you're starting to be able to tell which petals are in front and which petals are in the back. Just by doing this little exercise this way. So, we're pushing this one back and back here into there. Softening this and this. I always keep a, um, a paper towel in my hand, which is something I try to teach my students to do so that they can quickly adjust anything that um, isn't looking the way they want it to look. Now we're just basically pushing some petals back Bring in some petals forward. And defining those edges, but making those edges soft. We don't really want any really hard edges at this point. And I'm liking that. Maybe let that be a little brighter up there. Blot off anything that you don't like the looks of. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's make up a little more violet with our pyrrole red. A little ultramarine. Ooh, that's a nice, nice dark, but a little too blue. A little more red. Getting it to that warm violet that we want and pushing this really um, here. And I think we want this, a little bit of this over here this time instead of that bright green. I think that looks nice. Okay, I like that. It's fun to do it differently, um, so different from the way you did it before. And now I'm just laying it, I'm separating those petals, pushing some back, bringing some forward, defining edges, and blotting and then softening. And if it's too much, just blot it off. Like that. All right. I'm liking this hard edge right there. I'll we'll put a little bit of that down here just to give us some continuity. I'm gonna add a little bit of violet in here as well in this dark area just to push that back. Like that. Just to make continuity here. And to make this darker under here. There's it would be a shadow there. And washing that out. And uh, we're going to stop here and reevaluate and just see where we need to take some darks out. 
let a few more darts in. And I think we're just about finished here. Okay, we're back. And this is relatively dry. So now I'm gonna go in and define again some of these darker areas with a uh, mixture that I just made up, a little darker mixture. Really pushing the darks in here, making these leaves pop. And you can do a few at a time, kind of blend them all together. loosely like this, or you can take a damp brush. But because I want some texture, I'm just gonna do it this way and develop a little bit of texture as we go. Pushing this really, this one behind, this petal behind or leaf behind right there, very dark. And this area right here, very dark. And this area here, and we haven't taken off the masking fluid yet. So we're just carefully laying in these darks just to make it really pop. Softening as we go up. You can do it with your finger. You can do it with um, paper towel. like that. Coming in here anywhere that I want that dark and I want those petals to pop. Trying, trying to be, uh, con have continuity here. You can wash your brush, blot it, soften this, soften all these edges. So it's just a balancing act between laying down your paint and softening it back. And if you want, because artichokes do have these lines in them, just making those softening it back. Everywhere you want definite lines in the direction, of course, that it, um, and this is very, very light touch here. You don't want to overdo this or it will look artificial. Just here and there. And not the same level of detail on all the, on all the, uh, See, that's already more than it needs to be right there. So I would just soften, go back and soften this if my lines get too, um, too fidgety. Because I tend to over detail things. So I would just soften them like that. And you always want the most detail right at the forefront of your painting. where the detail would show up the most. Soften that a little bit. Okay. Uh, really, that's all I would do to this. I might push some of these back a little bit in there, just to make sure that we have a nice pop between these um, different little petally things or leaves, or I guess they are artichoke leaves, so yeah. So I would leave that. I'm gonna let that dry, then we're gonna pull off the um, masking fluid and see what we've got. 
Usually when I get to this point, before I pull off the masking fluid, I'm gonna let it dry naturally. So we're gonna do that and we'll be back. 